Please welcome the Executive Director of Sunshine Enterprises, Mr. B.J. Stewart. Good morning. Congratulations, CBA graduates. Congratulations. And I even have a family member that's graduating, Jean. Congratulations, Jean Varner Doe. Shout out to Jean. Uh, I love my job. You know why I love my job? Because I get to come to work every day knowing that I am empowering folk to accomplish their dreams. I love my job, man. Isn't that awesome? And I just want to provide some encouragement that the Community Business Academy is not the end of your journey with Sunshine Enterprises. It is just the beginning. We talked a little bit earlier about our business acceleration services, and that will be your ongoing lifeline to resources and coaching and mentorship as you engage in your entrepreneurial journey. And uh, Cohort 107 got it, that entrepreneurship is not about creating and launching products and services. It's about what? Creating value. Amen to that. So you're also going to need some cash, too. So access to capital, our access to capital, credit to capital programming is going to be critical to your journey. So please take advantage of all the resources that you have available to you. And who is going to sign up for their 90-day coaching? All right, every hand should be raised. All right. And just let me uh, complete my comments here by saying you all have a critical role to play to the next cohort of the Community Business Academy. Because more than 50% of you all was referred to someone who went through the Community Business Academy. So your role is to spread the word. And as we are recruiting actively right now for our spring cohort, you guys play a critical role of spreading the word to your network such that those folks can be in the next graduating class of the Community Business Academy. All right, we got a deal? All right. Well, it is my pleasure to announce, or introduce, I should say, this morning's keynote speaker. Let me introduce to you Marissa Diaz Arce, the newly named Director of Brand Awareness and Tenant Partnerships and Engagement at Navy Pier, Inc. Marissa excels in negotiating and executing deals with experiential marketing companies, diversifying brand activation experiences at the pier. She is also the CEO of Marissa Diaz Arce LLC, leveraging her experience in coordinating events and managing setups efficiently. Beyond her professional roles, Marissa is dedicated to promoting community and diversity, curating markets that highlight local small businesses and supporting minority-owned women businesses within uh, tenant kiosks, demonstrating her commitment to local entrepreneurship and inclusivity. Alongside her professional endeavors, she co-founded Dandole, hopefully I pronounced uh, pronounce that right, Tech NFP, serving as the CFO and focusing on bridging the digital divide by providing technology resources to disadvantaged students. Her career journey includes role as Kojafa at Lolita Productions LLC, Director of Logistics and Operations at the Daniel Ramos Puerto Rican Festival and a teacher at Chicago in Chicago Public Schools. This highlights her ongoing dedication to education, community engagement, and fostering diverse entrepreneurship. So let's give a phenomenal Sunshine Enterprise welcome to Marissa Diaz Arce. Marissa? Wow. I'm sure this happens to y'all. Never would I have ever imagined, right? Where like, I didn't think, would you have told me when I started um, going to school to be an educator that I would not be teaching and that I would be a keynote speaker in front of 96 of Chicago's finest new small business, I wouldn't believe you. I wouldn't believe you. So thank you so much for the opportunity. 
buenos días for those of you that speak Spanish. I'm going to say buenos días, you say it back. Buenos días. Gracias, gracias. I am so honored to be here. And even though I have like this really nice, awesome, long speech, because they gave me 10 minutes, can you believe it? I'm like, oh, I like talking, you know? But um, I, I just feel very compelled to also just speak from the heart. Um, I know that it has not been easy for you all to get to this point. And to be able to stand before you and give you some words of encouragement um, as you enter into this new journey in your lives and alongside all of your family that are here and friends that support you is truly an honor. And so I'm, I'm grateful. Thank you for your attention and thank you for your time because it's precious, right? Um, so prepping to stand before all of you today, I spent the time looking up statistics and quotes because, you know, that's what they say you're supposed to do, you know. Start off with like this really engaging thing and give them some stats and a quote. And so I did that, right? And I was like, all right, who are we gonna talk about? What, what are we gonna say here? And I read one that was like, okay, it's from our homeboy, former president, Chicagoan, Barack Obama, right? Right? And he said, it read, Small businesses are the backbone of our economy and the cornerstone to our communities. I was like, wow, right? That's impressive. But I read it also, I read it in my bilingual brain was small businesses are the backbone to our economy and the corner store to our communities. And I was like, okay. He gave acknowledgement to the corner store. And I believe growing up on the West Side, because I'm from Humboldt Park, and I'm sure it exists on the South Side too. We all had a corner store, right? That was like our first experience with entrepreneurship right there, right? You had your ice cream truck, you had your elotero man, your paletero man, and you had your corner store, right? And it's also your first experiences probably in money. I remember the penny candies, anybody else? You get 25 cents, life changing, okay? You go to the corner store, smack it on the counter, and you get this brown little bag, and you get like a little array of treats, and you get to pick all the penny candies. And honestly, just even that engagement, right? And that also, it wasn't just for us as children, but even as adults, like you would go to the corner store, and that's where all the cheese or the gossip, that's like the hangout, you like, you go and you're like, oh, so what's going on? And then you fill in on everything that's going on in the neighborhood, this is before obviously social media, right? So it was like the melting pot of our communities. And this also existed at the gas station, right? This also existed within the, the family member or the friend down the street who was selling what we call limbes, which were frozen Kool-Aid in a cup. And she sold it from her window for 25 cents, right? And so we've been surrounded by that. And how dope is it that we now get to be those people in the world, right? Full circle moment, right? Um, I mean, Chicago, I mean, he obviously, he didn't say corner store, but he obviously, you know, just triggered that, that memory. I was like, wow, you know, Obama knows about the corner store. <laughs> it was in when I was reading my speech to my daughter that I realized that it didn't say corner store as well. <laughs> but honestly, all, I will say that all great things really do come from Chicago. I will say that, I stand on that. And like, you go to any other place in the world and they ask you where you're from and you're like, I'm from Chicago, like it's its own state. Like some people are like, I'm from California, I'm from New York, and we're like, we're from Chicago. And they're like, don't worry about the state. It, all you need to know is <laughs> the city. And that's where I'm from. And then if you meet someone else who's from Chicago and you're like, but what part? <laughs> this is a true test. How Chicago are you, right? Can we connect on some monuments, right? And some things that happen in the city and then when they hit you, like, what kind of started from, and you're like, stop talking, just stop, just stop. But when you meet someone who's from Chicago, you also understand the grit that they also had to get through in order to be alive and here today, right? It's not easy, but that, you know, all great things aren't easy. It's not easy being great. You think it is, but it's not. And so when you come from Chicago, you know that you're great, right off the bat, 
We awesome. We dope, right? So I looked up. So what's some awesome, some other things that are really dope that are great from Chicago that you probably didn't know? I just, you know, okay, again, this is my stats, right, that I looked up, right? So from skyscrapers, did you know that, right, to the cell phone, all right, to the vacuum cleaner, but most importantly, house music. Please. Most important, the most important, right? It really does demonstrate the essence and, and achievements and the challenges that are going to be presented and that honestly, as Chicagoans and as Chicago, that we always overcome. And so entrepreneurship, it really is about taking a chance on yourself. You have an idea and you, be and you believing in it. And even when others doubt your success, you have to be your number one fan. For some, it's something that you found joy and passion in and realized that this was something you can build and be sustainable. And for others, it was a great idea not knowing even how to start or where to begin. Like, who do you talk to? How do you scale it out? And I heard that actually a couple times in some of the speeches that were given today. And luckily, there was Sunshine Enterprises with open doors. And what a fitting name, right? Sunshine. Everybody loves some sunshine, right? Which was, at one point in time, another business that was a great idea, right? And had to start and scale and look at where they are at today, right? Able to offer you all of those amazing, now being graduates, opportunities and connects and networking, which are valuable in the next steps, because this is honestly really just the beginning. A little bit about my entrepreneurship journey. Um, it actually, as I mentioned, I started, I was an educator for 12 years, a Chicago public um, middle school teacher. And I went to school to be a middle school math science and tech teacher. I saw the important, I, I went to be a teacher because teachers were actually a saving grace for me as a child. School was a sanctuary space for me growing up. It was safer than being at home. And so I knew that there were going to be other kids out there like me, and I was like, you know, I, this is a space that I wanna be. And in getting into the classroom, I was like, all right, well, I wanna do something fun, because I don't wanna teach English, that's boring. And so I was like, all right, I like science, you get to do stuff, and soon realized that, you know, you can't do science without math, and you can't do math without science. And it just so happened to, come across an opportunity where I got to learn how does math support science? How can you teach that? And how do you teach science supporting math? And how do you use technology to support them both? And it was really fun. I think I was doing some really cool stuff with my students, things that they weren't really doing in their other classrooms with their previous teachers, very um, fresh. And just like one of the speakers before me, burnout is real. And when you can't show up for your students in a very energetic, positive way to be there to support them, and you're walking into like, ugh, I gotta, you know, when you have your own life going on, then it's probably time that you stop teaching and you not enter that space no more. And so I, I recognized that. I was like, hey man, I have a lot going on. My mom is sick. I'm just not in a, in a good mental space. And then, on top of that started the process of separation and then eventually divorce from my spouse. And it was in that time that I was like, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Luckily, towards the end of my teaching career, I had an opportunity to apply for a grant and I went from teaching math science to teaching just technology. I got a grant that sent me out Teachers never get grants that get them sent out of the city, by the way. So I got sent out of Philadelphia and I got to teach entrepreneurship through app development. I got to teach a group of 110 young people to identify a need within their community and how do you create a business to solve that? And how do you create an app to support that? So much fun. We did like a shark tank. It was science fair boards, and they were pitching, they had business plans, we went through financials, and it was all hypothetical. If the world could not stop you, what would you do? And I had a, two students come out of that actually um, patenting their idea. And I'm over here teaching them what to do, and I'm like, dang, 
I wish I could do that. <laughs> it's like, okay, when you guys make a lot of money, don't forget me, all right? Come back, all right? And so I, I just wanted to say that that led me to then um, going to events in my neighborhood, identifying a need within my community, realizing that we didn't have a space where we had pop-up markets and we didn't have cool stuff in Humble Park. And so how do I make those cool things happen? And I got connected with people within the community, started volunteering my time, met some people who held some doors open for me, and I started doing markets out of the boat house in um, Humble Park. And I brought my best friend along, because I'm not doing this by myself. <laughs> like, my best friend, we were since high school. Like, come on, you wanna do this with me? She's like, sure. And the next thing you know, we are now co-jefas um, of Lolita Productions. <laughs> yes. So in doing that, I just also want to take a moment um, to give a special shout out to one of Sunshine's very own, because also without her, I wouldn't be here, um, Ms. Nadia Enriquez. So me and my best friend were doing pop-up markets, right? And it started off with five tables, five women, and, and, that, and it started to grow, and they're like, but there's a need, we wanna do this, and we kept doing it, they gave us the space for free, we're like, this is a business, let's do it, and we just went for it. And in doing that, Nadia heard of what we were doing, and she's like, hey, we have this, op hi, so I saw say, hi. So we have this opportunity, we wanna do a market, and you girls are doing that, and so we were wondering if you would work with us to do a market along Division Street. It was a street pop-up, and we called it WEPA. And um, in doing that, I developed a relationship with her, and then some random opportunity comes up, again, where they reach out to the Puerto Rican Cultural Center, Nadia reaches out to my best friend and I, and she's like, hey, Navy Pier wants us to do a pop-up market. For 10 people, um, Garfield Park wasn't able to do it, so they asked us, and we're wondering if you ladies would like this opportunity because we don't have the bandwidth to do it. It's not, you know, our thing. We got, we're, we're working on a lot of other projects right now. And my best friend and I were like, yeah, for sure. And so we took on that opportunity, unpaid. We showed up, we got, we were offered 10 spaces. We took up 12 because that's what we do. We take up space. <laughs> And how dope, right? Like how dope? We're like now in this, in the Amoeba, which is between Starbucks and McDonald's and the heart of Navy Pier, and we're so excited. Again, not we're not making any money. We were just knew that it was going to be, it was just just the press alone, just the photo ops was going to be a, a great and to help us take our business to the next level. And then it was in that moment that I actually met the man who ended up hiring me. And he enjoyed the work that I, I did in the organizing and planning and stuff like that. We got to continue, we did winter markets and then we went back and did spring break markets and then we added workshops because we gotta teach, we always gotta teach, we always gotta show and give and we used entrepreneurs who had their own business because one thing I learned from teaching is that a student knows what they're doing when they're able to teach someone else. So if you're an artist, then you should be able to teach someone how to do art. And do it your way. There's no textbook way of being able to say it or present it. And so honestly, I mean, that opportunity of, hey, you want to do this pop-up market in two weeks stressed to get the vendors, opened the door for me to meet the person who ended up offering me a job maybe a, a year and a half later, to now being able to stand before you and the, the recent role that I've been, as of yesterday, I've been promoted to director of brand activations and so we continue to thank you and we continue to extend those opportunities it just that door but it took myself and my my um, business partner to step through and continue walking through and I want to share another story how this continues to be a ripple effect so fast forward it's now February uh, no, it's actually last year in the summertime, and I get to work with Sunshine in bringing vendors to Navy Pier. I, I'm like, awesome, I get a, like a whole new group of people, fresh faces, fresh things, and, 
every weekend, there's this one woman who is holding it down by the name of Dana Todd Pope. Yeah. You all might know her. She's amazing, phenomenal. She's there every week. And she's like, yep, you can leave the parking passes with me, Marissa, Marissa. Don't worry, I'll hold it down of anyone. I already know. I'm a vet. I've done this before. I'm like, okay, good. I feel good. All right. And so an opportunity arose um, just earlier in the year. Now we're in February, or like I said, end of January. And one of our tenants at Navy Pier are leaving. They're, they're after 20 years, decide to shut down their business. They're like, we're done. And so we have the empty kiosk. And we have a black makers market that's about to start and something that the pier has never done before. And so I'm like empty kiosk. We have a bunch of people that want to vend. How do we use this empty space? If it's not being used, then why is it going to be closed? Like we should look like we have things going on. And so I worked with a couple artists that have come through Sunshine and some that I've met through other markets to create a rotating space for black makers. Well, no one took on that kiosk in March, so guess what it becomes? Because what comes after Black History Month? Women's History Month, that's right. And so I was like, okay, ladies. <laughs> they had two weeks to get ready for the other one. They had a week to get ready for this one. And I was like, all right, no one's taking up this space. Do you guys wanna use it? Tell me yes, you wanna use it. Please tell me you wanna use it. Whatever you need, I'll help you. And so Dana and Martha Wade joined forces to then open up the Women's Life Artist Studio. And they have since, more, more recently, went to Art Basel. And from that experience of someone opening the door to that experience for them, they are now going to go to Coachella. And they're now going to go to Martha's Vineyard. And they're, like, the opportunities that they've extended through their space by having women artists within their space continues to thrive. And so originally, my theme of my speech was all great things come from Chicago, which is still true. Right? Off the back. But more importantly, after reflecting and after having a quick chat with BJ actually in the green room, it made, I, I realized that actually it really is just about making sure that as the door has been held open for you, that you continue to hold that door open for those who are to come after you. No one's going to ever steal your sauce because it's your sauce, you made it. They might like the idea, they might try to copy it, but it will never be exactly what you're doing. So don't ever be intimidated by someone else who's coming up. They say crabs in a bucket. I never understood what that meant until someone like showed me a picture, like look at this, this is what crabs do. And I was like, ooh, that's ugly. Let's not be like that. Because I wouldn't be here if she didn't hold the door open for me, right? And you wouldn't be here if someone didn't open the door for you. So I leave you all in saying this. Thank you for showing up for yourselves. Thank you for putting yourselves out there. Thank you for being sunshine within the sunshine. And never stop giving up for you and for those who come after you. Thank you. And congratulations, graduates. Give it up again for Marissa Diaz-Arce.